Hello, and welcome to this edition of De Facto Weekly Review, a weekly roundup of the biggest stories shaping Mongolia. Here with us tonight is our commenter and economist, Jarad of De Facto, and my name is Dutko. Mm -hmm. We're live on Facebook at V Television. We want to hear your thoughts, so send us your comments on Twitter with hashtag Jarad underscore De Facto. Coming up on this program. Prime Minister Hurul Sukh says it has become clear that since 2016 there have been miscommunications between our two nations. The court has taken former Prime Minister Bayer and Sukh Bilik, uh, Sahin Bilik under investigative custody for a month. Independence of information is derived from the power of knowledge and development. Due to um, public administration departments commencing work at 8 o'clock starting from tomorrow, there will be changes made to public transportation schedules. So for our first topic, we're going to discuss the Prime Minister. Um, so the Prime Minister, uh, Hurul Sukh, just recently made a state visit to China. The two parties have celebrated the potentially successful commercial and economic partnerships between the two nations and have set a goal of 10 billion U.S. dollars in trade flows by 2020. Future plans are to develop and sign thermal power agreements with a focus on transportation of goods by railway as agreed upon by the two nations' governments. And China has expressed a dedication to the successful implementation of these agreements. China's One Belt, One Road initiative will further strengthen the collaboration of the two nations, and with this, the successful implementation of Mongolia's steep road development plan will be f further solidified. So, Mr. Jarosak Saha, um, within the scope of this uh, visit, what resolutions and decision have, decisions have been agreed upon and will be further discussed, do you think? Well, what was the specifics about the meeting, uh, the visit was, it, we went, I was at, uh, in, in a delegation as a media, we went to Beijing first, then to Hainan, to Bao Asia Forum, mm -hmm. which kind of world economic forum in Europe, only for Asia. And in that Boao form, uh, President Xi Jinping announced that his economic policy, since he had uh, been re-elected, mm -hmm. because he was re-elected for another five years, uh, no, no, another for not clear time, because previously the Chinese leaders were elected for ten years, mm -hmm. I mean, with five five years, and uh, they have changed, they have amended the constitutions, deleting that provisions. So Mr. Z announced his economic program, uh, and uh, he had announced particular further opening of uh, Chinese economy with enhancing f on four things. First, he said, we will have more foreign services, in particular financial services. China will welcome more financial services, foreign banks, insurance companies, he said. Second, he, they, China will improve their foreign direct investment conditions further on. Third, they will work more to protect intellectual property, which was, uh, you know, the main cause before in between many countries with China. And the fourth was uh, about China will increase their import, mm. in particular from our neighbors, because they have a policy called shared future and shared prosperity. So under this whole concept, our meetings went on, and our prime minister met Chinese prime minister, and two, between two countries they have signed 11, two governments, 11 documents, mm -hmm. and Mongolian private sector have signed altogether 36 documents. Uh, agreements, half of them agreement, the other half is memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. But some of them are very substantial, including, for example, uh, a group called um, Body International, they have signed Boruljut, the, this is the place name, mm -hmm. a power stations project with a China State Construction Engineering Company. Mm -hmm. It's over 400 million US dollar project and the head of the Body International said they have been working on that for three and a half years. Now it's more or less have signed this one. Secondly, the other large one is another com com bank called Bagda, mm -hmm. Mongolian Commercial Bank, had signed with Inner Mongolian Bank 300 million US dollar credit line, etc., etc. Some 15 mm. major companies, um, major contracts were signed. Uh, how the Foreign Minister Sokhbatr mentioned that in between two states there were some three, 460 million US dollar agreement, mm -hmm. but in between the private sectors of 460, 4.6 4 
billion two weeks contract, which a uh, billion dollars contract, which shows uh, really a great uh, imp improvement of cooperation between private companies. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> the other, other thing was a, a other thing was about the Mongolian Chamber of Commerce had organized Mongolia China Business Forum, mm -hmm. which was attended by. 300, 300 almost Chinese and Mongolian businesses, mm -hmm. which was, I mean, which is the largest in our history probably yeah. in between two countries' businesses. And the head of the Chinese International Trade Support Committee, Mr. Jiang Zonwei, he said that now after visit of Chinese President Xi Jinping to Mongolia 2014, mm -hmm. the uh, cooperation between two countries came to the completely higher quality level and now one third of foreign direct investment to Mongolia is made by China. Mm -hmm. So he was highlighting that point. Yeah. So of the 36 contracts that you just mentioned, um, which approximately values to $4.6 billion, uh, what specific sectors are they trying to concentrate mainly in and what, when are they expected to commence and do you think they are feasible? Good questions <laughs> because mostly it was more energy sector, power stations, and it was also one contract uh, about the pipeline construction mm -hmm. from Russia through Mongolia. So there are several interesting projects. If it is, it goes, that will play a substantial role in the economy of Mongolia. Mm -hmm. But I am confident that the private sector businesses usually goes. Mm -hmm. But the agreement between governments doesn't go as usual, uh, as, as often, because, you know, the government is changed in this country every two years. Mm -hmm. So one prime minister comes, they agree on certain projects. This prime minister comes, is completely uh, want to replace that project. Mm -hmm. So as a result, for example, about 400 million US dollar project about the, uh, the uh, water recirculation, how you say, uh, this uh, waste water waste management water waste. project. Mm -hmm. That's the long discussed, long life project which never was implemented. Mm -hmm. It's the third time they have agreed that China will do this one. Mm -hmm. Because the previous ones, after agreement, another one, or the or previous prime minister, the next one was saying, well, we will do different, mm -hmm. or we will do it by France. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this time the, these contracts will be more or less, will have a different faith. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this, this will be implemented. Uh, another like um, investment agreement that I've heard that China wants to do is the railway. Um, so during China's visit to Mongolia, uh, to the Kashin Sukht border, there was an uh, agreement to have an investment of around 23 mu um, million US dollars. Um, do you think these discussions uh, were discussed and further at this uh, state visit? Y yes, uh, this contract about extending the Kashin Sukhoi port Mm -hmm. uh, was signed by two uh, in presence of two prime ministers by related authorities, ministries, mm -hmm. in uh, Beijing. Then our prime minister went from Beijing to that border from Chinese side, mm -hmm. and he had met the governor of Bayang Nur Aymag of Inner Mongolia, mm -hmm. on which territory the, the, the port is there. Mm -hmm. But it happened that this port belonged to another provinces, which is not the, the territory. And uh, the, the new governor, of the uh, governor of the Bayang Nurai Mag in Inner Mongolia was very happy and he said that he will be able to receive up to t oh, at least 10 million tons, up to 30 million tons a year of coal through this port. Mm -hmm. And he, he said that now we can do it, we got order, he said, you know, from the top, and now he, they will do. But I think it, is, it has to do mostly uh, outer road. Mm -hmm. But in, as far as uh, railway concern, uh, Mongolia is to be definite with the project and to discuss again with China to receive mm -hmm. a loan or further, further uh, cooperation in this field. The problem with railway is uh, they have finally should agree up all, upon all these ports, railways mm -hmm. through the ports, border points that it, this whole railways go with the Chinese gauge, mm -hmm. which is 85 millimeters narrower than the Russian gauge. Mm -hmm. 
And so this sort of discussion is still to go. And Mongolia is looking forward to see more smooth transportation of coal. And by the way, Prime Minister Hurisuk have ordered Irdines Tavan Todoroy, a Mongolian coal company, to be responsible for the transport, not only from the uh, mine itself mm -hmm. site, but all the way through the, the um, uh, road mm -hmm. that have already a big problem. Yes. So many cars, long queues. Mm -hmm. Now, still, when the Prime Minister came there, there was some already queue. Yeah. So Overall we have a lot still to, e to solve many issues mm -hmm. logistics-wise here. Mm -hmm. And so mining is like a very big um, issue in Mongolia. Like we've had a lot of con controversial agreements happening with the citizens being against it. And so currently the entire corruption agency is uh, investigating the Oyutadla uh, agreement between the government of Mongolia and Ivanhoe and Rio Tinto from 2019. Um, so in May of uh, 2018, 20, uh, of 2015, they approved an underground mine financing plan. Uh, and with that, the authorities have issued, um, have shown a misuse of authority and position. And by signing this controversial agreement, certain authorized personnel have put themselves into a compromised position. So former um, uh, S. Bayer, who held the position of the Prime Minister between 27 and 2019, and Sehan Bitlik, uh, who was Prime Minister from 2014 to 2016, have both been detained under investigative custody on 10th of April uh, due to being suspects of being involved in these controversial contracts. Uh, a statement from the prosecutor reads, uh, Che uh, Sehan Bitlik has committed a felony under the civil law and has been taken into custody for one month. And so the uh, anti-corruption agency has taken Bayersocht, Adam Sehan, um, Bem Sehan for further questioning and has asked the court for a warrant to hold the named individuals for a longer investigative custody. Mm -hmm. And the court has granted a 30-day period of uh, investigative com uh, custody. So with these numerous people having been taken into custody recently, uh, what are your opinions on this issue? First of all, the Mongolian government is not directly saying that they made a wrongdoing with these two contracts of uh, Oyu Talwa. Mm. But they said, they said, could be, that's the, the word they're using, maybe, so which is very warning. Why you would arrest somebody for the underground of maybe? Because you can, one is thing is you can investigate, the other thing is you take it to prison, right? Mm -hmm. So for arrest. So this is a bit concern, uh, but I, I see that, uh, you know, our president recently at the opening of uh, parliament said that we I will change the head of the anti-corruption agency. You will support me, he said. Uh, and uh, that's the very clear announcement after which all these arrests of very high-ranking former officials mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. So I'm just worried, let it be just uh, really with the clear facts that those arrests. Otherwise, if it is politically motivated, it will make us looking very bad. That's my first concern. If they are really have taken some, either, I, I'm not saying about the uh, OT agreement or so, mm -hmm. I understood they have other occasions of personal wrongdoing. So with their certain properties that some of them have abroad, they mm -hmm. need to explain, and this sort of things. And corruption is something that is it's a very high time to fight in Mongolia. And if it's the right cases, I don't know. They, have, they need to announce. But it's mm -hmm. very high-ranking cases. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why we want to know exactly what's happening. But if once this anti-corruption agency goes after corruption, I, I, I think they should go, first of all, to the um, heads of two large political parties. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they have been receiving more than 10 million tugriks from companies, billion tugriks probably, as, as where they were accusing each other during campaign financing. If they have exceeded 10 million tugriks, the both should be uh, arrested because it's criminal cases. It's, by our law, it, is, it has penalty, mm -hmm. which they are not doing. They are not just they're doing the sort of arrests. Uh, under the circumstances we have just now talked, and hopefully it is, uh, it has a very clear cases. But you know what the Mongolians' concern is? What? <laughs> Final aim is not to arrest them. 
final aim is if they are really have been fed uh, the embezzling our properties, mm -hmm. public assets, first of all, they should pay back. Second issue, whether they are in prison, is a technical issue. Mm -hmm. They should take case like in Georgia. President Saakashvili corrupt, took corrupt people, called corrupt people, and they said, you have stolen this amount of money. Bring it back. Mm -hmm. You're free. Otherwise, we will arrest you. We will take the money anyway. So they have given back all money. That's what mm -hmm. we want. The other thing is um, this threat of firing this uh, anti-corruption agency here, mm -hmm. uh, the chair, Mr. Ink Charal, mm -hmm. who was, by the way, nominated in July 2016 for six years. So he is, should be there on 2022. Mm -hmm. And by ac according to the law, anti-corruption agency law, anti-corruption cases, fights law, this man can be re uh, changed only in under, under three conditions. One, health issue. Second, on the request, third, the term is finished. Mm -hmm. So I think it, we are expecting a long-term fight between president because I don't think uh, the parliament, which belongs, majority belongs to the opposition, uh, the uh, People's Party, will allow president to uh, sack him. Yeah. So very interesting events are to happen. We, we are waiting for them. And uh, by the way, uh, on, uh, you said about this uh, OT in uh, Rio cases. Mm -hmm. We should make clear that Rio is not under investigation. That was the reported by Swiss authority. It's mm -hmm. called, uh, it's called uh, uh, Swiss Office of the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. According to the Financial Times, it said that its inquiry was not directed against to the Anglo-Australian Mining Group. Mm -hmm. So it, it, we should make clear. Yeah. And uh, plus, uh, we should be also very careful about this project, which is a substantial part of our economy today. This project employees uh, 140,000 uh, uh, yeah, 140, uh, mm -hmm. people, no, no, 14,000, uh, four, 14,000, people, 95% of which Mongolians, mm. directly. And indirectly, maybe twice more, Mongolians are involved with the project, mm -hmm. first. Second, this project is paying almost 200 million US dollars for last year only, for tax, for royalty, etc. Mm. This is a huge contribution to the economy. Mm -hmm. And we, Mongolians, should, uh, should be very careful for this project, because we should not throw a baby after washed water, <laughs> as I yeah. say. Um, okay, so recently um, there was the 2018 university entrance exams held um, on May 5th at 9 a.m. till 6 a.m. Uh, 6 p.m. on the 16th of May. And according to the Ministry of Education, there was no extension on registration period and additional uh, sub subject registration. And it said that the Educational Evaluation Center will publish the an university interesting like um, topics, um, the departments they can choose mm -hmm. later on. And according to the National Statistics Office, there are currently 96 active universities in developing nations. The main issue is that the employment of under or non-educated persons, uh, people. How, um, however, in Mongolia, we have the issue of employing persons with higher educational levels. Um, so Mongolia has the goal of develop, uh, developing a society based on education and development of um, skills by 2030 as set by the, their goals for the sustainable. And um, so Mongolia's goal is to be filling the skilled employment gap that currently exists as well as to be recognized on the global uh, landscape as like a country that can provide highly skilled laborers. However, the current status quo does not look promising um, with its significant gap. So um, what kind of majors do you think are more likely to lead for employment for recent graduates of the general education system? And which occupational sector would you recommend to students? Uh, it's a very important question because now thousands of young people are selecting or opting for their future profession. 
Up to now, many people were taking very much humanitarian disciplines. Mm -hmm. But however, of course it's a private issue, but however, if I am asked, I would advise to do, to select one of this STEM, so-called mm -hmm. science, it is technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm -hmm. These four professions together are combined, some of them combined, give more chance for young people to have a good job at this time. Mm -hmm. Because this is a, it is a time of, of uh, uh, blockchain, it's a time of artificial intelligence. Both will require knowledge in these four sectors. And mm -hmm. young people, after having this education related in this field, will have more chance to be hired all around the world. Mm -hmm. Because Mongolians usually learn foreign language very fast. Mm -hmm. And if they now equip it with this knowledge, I think we will have a way less problem than now. Today, unfortunately, we have 40% of graduates, high school, university high school graduates, university graduates, mm -hmm. having a job by their prof in line of the, their profession. But 60% is completely offline. Mm -hmm. What does it show? It shows that we need to improve our education quality. We need to meet demand, labor demand of the market. So we need more further study and we, we most importantly have this capacity of converting young people from uh, data to information, mm -hmm. from information to knowledge mm -hmm. and use that knowledge, consuming the, that knowledge. This is the capacity that is required by graduates of universities nowadays. And for that, what we have to do is, at least we should not have three shifts in schools. We have in some, in particular Lambata city, schools with three shifts, and they usually the kids of the first grads go at the night shift because they have a shorter time. Mm -hmm. And in our streets, no lights, in the Gert district, this is a huge issue. That's why many parents staying the outside of the school take the children, those who, can, who cannot. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's the first issue. And also, uh, there should not be uh, many shifts, three shifts at least. Further on, two shifts. But also, we, we Mongolians should pay more attention to have, in our education system, first of all, to a right person, not knowledgeable person. Because the, the child, uh, we, are, should not, we should not be bombarding children with uh, huge mathematics, all this heavy homework. Mm -hmm. So we are, grow, we are coming grow, to growing conclusion that let's have a first of all the right person, then give a knowledge. Mm -hmm. As far as foreign language is concerned, which is very family, which is I mean, big subject for Mongolia, mm -hmm. we came to the conclusion that maybe first to get the, a child to know own language very well. Mm -hmm. Through the language we learn our culture, traditions, the most important that the way we think that's the pattern of staying with the child, they're learning. Mm -hmm. And only after that, maybe from the third grade, we start the first foreign language, maybe at the seventh grade, the second foreign language, mm -hmm. which is a quite common practice in European countries. In particular, you know, there is a, a test called PISA, mm -hmm. which show ranks 15 years old school children knowledge in the mathematics, uh, in uh, literature, language, science, and they rank the countries. You know, which is number one country? Singapore. Germany, which is regarded one of the best, mm -hmm. number 16. So I think Mongolia uh, has to use that uh, uh, report. We actually uh, rep applied for, because this is a, for OECD, mm -hmm. member countries and non-member countries. Mongolia applied, we are planning to have it 2021, but we don't know yet who will be in charge of that uh, the exam. Mm -hmm. um, even with uh, we've it's been like a recent trend that even with the four years of high uh, university level education, many students have not acquired the needed skills or knowledge to become employed. Do you think there is a need for everyone to ha uh, have a university degree? First of all, it's a personal choice. Secondly, it's a matter of increasing if quality of higher education. Even all, all, all stages of education. It starts from good teacher. And good teacher should have 
at least minimum conditions. Mm -hmm. And in Mongolia, teachers are doctor, teachers and doctors are the uh, less, least paid professionals. Mm -hmm. And that's why nowadays the teacher is going to make another strike, which mostly are to be followed by doctors and uh, nurses. Mm -hmm. So we need to really adjust that uh, current the, the compensation into the current economic situation, which of course increases uh, budget expenses, but it can be done at the cost of economy other parts of the uh, other public budget for, I don't know, luxury cars, whatever. So the sort of things to be made in this country. Mm -hmm. And in, in addition to the students getting stressed, even the normal citizens are getting stressed due to traffic as we've seen recently. The Odambatar mayor, uh, Major's Office uh, recently announced that the public administration office workers will start working at 8 a.m. Um, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. In, in an effort to reduce the traffic volumes due to construction works that are going to commence soon. And this mandate has covered over 32,000 public administration officials. Um, before the announcement, the work uh, hours were from 8.30 to 5.30. So in connection, uh, do you believe that the added increase in like city traffic is causing more stress well, as well as time lost on just spending time on the road? Of course it is. I mean, that's why they are restricting our car's amount by the plate numbers, you know. Mm -hmm. If it is one, day, you don't go on Monday, for example, mm -hmm. for five days. They even tried to have even uneven plates numbers to be used, mm -hmm. which was opposed by the people, and so they are now introducing new measures, decreasing our, making earlier a lot of public officers' time, which is a correct way. But you know what is to be made is, like, you know, Singapore did, London did, they made this business district clear, the, the, the border of business district of the city, town, downtown and business district. And the car goes into, they are, every time they go into, they are paying. This is through the system called, uh, I don't remember exact the name, but this is the, the electric chips on the car in the, your car was read or read by the machine, uh -huh. which will increase in your uh, payment. Mm -hmm. You pay every month. If you are not paying, you have a problem with uh, traffic police. Uh, whether we like or not, we love or not mm -hmm. some part of the uh, population, it's the only way to decrease the, the traffic jam, first. Secondly, all this left, uh, right-handed car, Japanese cars, mm -hmm. to pay more. It is not a matter of uh, we love them or not. It's a matter of Mongolia is a left rule traffic control, traffic movement traffic country mm -hmm. and Japanese car they have to pay more for this using the other side like any countries do so these two measures to be made I think anyway it is even after all this bridge they are promising within two years to make a very long 900 90 million dollars investment making several bridges in the Ulaanbaatar city for the next two years I know it maybe will take even longer time, like all our other projects do. So these are at least three things they have, they should do it, you know, to make uh, the traffic mm, jam less. Otherwise we lose money, lose time, lose gas, uh, pollute the air, mm -hmm. it's terrible. Yeah, thank you. Um, so thank you viewers for joining us for this week's De Facto Review. Please uh, join us for next week's topics at the same time next week. Thank, Thank you. you very much for watching our program. We today with Dulgon try to uh, make you knowing what's happening in the country on four important issues we believe that shape our society. Thank you very much. Thank you.